Hello everyone, this is Nick Lapham here with a flight planning question for you today. This uh, particular question is based on the integrated range tables that you'll find in the detailed fuel planning section of the sample document, CAP 697. It would be good for you to have that document handy just so that you can follow along with me. Uh, otherwise I've got it on the screen for you here. You'll notice mine looks a bit different to yours. It's got a piece cut out of the middle. That's just so that it could fit onto the screen. So let's have a look at our question. So re refer to image or flight planning manual MRJT, that's your medium range jet, detailed fuel planning, figure 4.5.3.1. So that's the particular figure that you're looking for. If you wouldn't mind finding that for me, please. So the question, given long range cruise temperature of minus 63 degrees Celsius at flight level 330, initial gross mass en route is 54,100 kgs, the leg flight time is 29 minutes, find the fuel consumption for this leg. And then we've got a range of four answers. Answer B seems to be oddly specific, but that might be a red herring, who knows. Um, now, before we begin, please make sure that you have the right table, because these questions tend to be quite long-winded, um, and if it, it would be an awful shame for you to get to the end of the question and find that you've used the wrong figures. Uh, so just make sure at the top of the table here, it is indeed for 33,000 feet, and it's for the long range cruise mode. Right. Um, another thing I'd just like to point out before we begin tackling the question is always make a habit of reading the notes that are attached to these tables. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that note one um, doesn't really apply to this sort of question so we can ignore all of that writing there. But note two um, is quite important. And that's because it concerns adjustments for operation at non-standard temperatures. Just having a look at this minus 63 degrees at flight level 330, it's definitely not going to be standard. So we need to pay attention to note two. And um, there are two corrections that we would need to make uh, during the course of this calculation. And um, one of them would be the we need to either increase or decrease the fuel required by 0.6% per 10 degrees above or below ISA. And we need to increase the true airspeed by one knot or decrease it by one knot, depending on whether we are one degree above or below ISA. So just keep that in the back of your head that there is two corrections that need to be made during the course of our calculation. Right, just talking a little bit about how this table actually works. So it allows us to make comparisons between what an aircraft's range capabilities are at a particular gross weight. Now, if I began a certain sector of my cruise at a given gross weight, I would have a certain theoretical range at that gross weight. If I flew for a bit, uh, I would soon enough find my aircraft lighter than it was before. And the only logical explanation for that is that I've burnt off some fuel in the process. And so as that gross weight reduces, also the range that the aircraft is capable of will go down. So we can draw comparisons between what a gross weight is at a certain point and what it is later. And we can figure out all sorts of things about how much fuel the aircraft is using and how the range is reducing. Okay, so looking at the left-hand column here, we've got the aircraft's gross weight. That is in thousands of kgs. And then we've got another row along the top here, and that's in increments of 100 kgs. Then we've also got another column here, which gives you the true airspeed for any particular gross weight. Um, and then the main body of the table, these are the range values. 
Now these would be in nautical air miles. In fact, anything that you put into or get out of this table will be in nautical air miles. Uh, that's important to remember, but in this particular question, there doesn't seem to be a reference to wind, which is a relief for us. So that means nautical air miles will be the same as nautical ground miles. So what I've put on the screen for you there is just a diagram to give you an idea of what the scenario in the question will look like. And I've invented these two points, point A and point B, just for a bit of clarity. So beginning at point A, the aircraft will have a certain gross weight, which we've been given, 54,100 kg. So let's fill that in. In fact, let's fill in all the information we have at this point. So at 54,100 kgs, it has a certain range which we haven't found out yet. And then the aircraft will fly for 29 minutes um, until it gets to B. If we knew how fast it was flying, which we should be able to get out of the table, and we knew it flew for 29 minutes, we could figure out the distance that it flew. And by the time it gets to B, it will have its new gross weight and a new possible range figure. Now, one thing we do need to get out of the way is to figure out what the ISA deviation is so that we can make um, any corrections um, during the course of this question. So the ISA deviation is a fairly simple calculation. If our current temperature is minus 63 degrees Celsius at flight level 330, and um, under ISA conditions, standard lapse rates would be that the temperature should reduce by two degrees per every thousand foot that you go up. So if we went up uh, 33,000 feet and it went down by two degrees every thousand, then it would go down by a total of 66 degrees. Um, and given that under ISA conditions, the temperature starts at 15 degrees at sea level, then we would expect at flight level 330 for the temperature to be minus 51. But it isn't minus 51, it's minus 63, which tells us that our temperature conditions are 12 degrees colder than ISA. So let's write that figure down on the page and just keep in mind that we're going to have to correct for that twice. Right, I've just zoomed on in on the table a little bit more. So let's try and get figures for the aircraft's range. So going up the left-hand column, we're looking for the row with 54,000. That's the one. And where does that meet the um, relevant increment from the top, which is 100 kgs? Bring that down. And our aircraft's range would be 3,929 nautical miles. So let's put that straight into our diagram. Another thing that we can um, pull out of the table is our true airspeed for that uh, particular gross weight, which is 433 knots. Now that 433 is the true airspeed before it's been corrected. So we need to account for that um, non-standard temperature. And looking at the notes at the bottom of the table, it should say decrease true airspeed by one knot per degree Celsius below ISA. And we know that our ISA deviation was minus 12. So a bit of simple math there would tell us that our true airspeed is 421 knots. So if our aircraft flew at 420 knots for 29 minutes, how far would it fly? Distance is equal to speed times time. So 421 multiplied by, that's 29 minutes as a decimal, should tell us that our aircraft flew for a total of 203 nautical miles. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace that 29 minutes with 203 because it's a more useful figure. Right, so I hope the picture is uh, slowly forming. So if we had that gross weight at A, and we had that possible range and we flew for 203 nautical miles, what would our new range be by the time we got to B? Just take one away from the other. That would tell us that our 
range when we got to B would be 3,726 nautical miles. So let's put that into our diagram. Now from here, we need to go back into the table and search for a figure that approximates as close as possible to this one. Um, so just looking around a bit, they have spotted it. That's the closest figure. We've got 3,728. If we look at the figure above it, that's quite a long way off. Um, the figure below it is also quite a long way off. So this looks like the right figure. If, if our range was sort of halfway between one or the other, then we might have to interpolate to the nearest um, 50 kgs. But in this case, uh, let's see what gross weight that would give us. Take that across to the left hand column. So we're looking at 53,000 kgs, bring it up and it's, it's zero. Um, so that just means it's 53,000 kgs. So pop that into our diagram. And there we have a complete picture of uh, what's happened in the aircraft's journey from A to B. Now, given it weighed that before and it weighs that now, well, how much fuel has been burnt off? Just take one away from the other. And that would tell us that 1,100 kgs has been burnt off during the course of the flight. Now, I'd love to say that was the final answer, but there's one small thing that we need to think about, which is that there was a second um, ISO deviation correction to make, which is that we need to decrease the fuel required by 0.6% per 10 degrees Celsius below ISA. Uh, now, that's probably not going to make a huge difference to our answer. 0.6% is not very much. Um, but we need to do it anyway. So since our ISO deviation was minus 12 and not minus 10, it would actually be 0.7%. Multiplied by 1,100 kgs, which tells us we need to reduce that 1,100 by 7.7 .7 kgs, which should give us a final answer of 1,092 kgs is what was burnt off. So let's go back to the original question, we wanted to find the fuel consumption for this leg, that's what we've done. And there's our answer, 1092. So we can see that the closest answer to that would be answer D. So uh, I hope that has uh, helped, and I'll see you on the next video.